Good evening. Welcome to Defender of the Faith. I'm your host, Pastor Vernon McMorris. We want to thank you for tuning in to Defender of the Faith, where we defend the Word of God. And you know what? It's a special blessing to have my brother back on the show. He is the chaplain. He is the pastor. And I'll let him introduce himself. And this year is going to be an awesome year. We are coming full force. We are here to make a difference in a world that is so corrupt and so dead that God is looking for real men of God to stand up. And we're not here to bash nobody. We're just here to tell the truth and defend what God expects for us as Christians and leaders to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of peace. So I'm going to let my, my brother introduce himself. I gave him a few minutes, and then we're going to have prayer, then we're going to move forward. Go ahead, bro. God bless you all today. I'm Dale Carter. I am the chaplain of the Douglas County Youth Center through Release Ministries and also the senior pastor of Cornerstone Deliverance Church here in Omaha, Nebraska. I've been in full-time ministry since 2005. I thank God for all that he has done and all that he is doing and all that he is about to do. Amen. I am excited about today's lesson that we will be able to share with you uh, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we are a full gospel operation here. We teach exactly what is from the Bible. Amen. We don't allow anything to be taken away or anything to put, be put to it. All we right. trust God on who he is and not just what he does. Well, before we get started, we're going to have a word of prayer. Oh, gracious, merciful God, we just thank you for allowing us to come together. First of all, Lord, we just ask you to yes. forgive us for the sin that we have committed against you, heaven and earth and our fellow man. But, Lord, today is a day of reckoning, a day of reconciliation, Lord. And, Lord, as we go forward on this show, Lord, if anybody have ought against one another, Lord, let them go into their private closet. Let them go to and reach out to the people and ask for forgiveness because we don't understand forgiveness is not for the other person. Person, but it's for you. So, Lord, as we go forth to, uh, to do this study on the power of forgiveness, Lord, help us as Christians that you said in your word, you know that they're my disciples, is how they love one another. And let love be a bond because, Lord, you first loved us. So let us learn to love one another as you loved us. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Let everyone say amen. 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 Brother, uh, brother, uh, Dale, he's going to be starting off with our main scripture, and it's going to be coming out of uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 26. Absolutely. If we can go to the text, the passage reads as this, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, we're talking about the power of forgiveness. Amen. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way right. be for first be reconciled mm -hmm. that's the, that's the word on today be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him all right now let your adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge hands you over to the officer that you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. In this particular passage, Jesus himself is speaking and he is sharing with the people of God about what it really is to forgive somebody and to work with someone else in a culture that is not necessarily your culture, mm -hmm. not necessarily their culture, mm -hmm. but God's culture of how he created us as people. Amen. To be unified together as, our, as brothers. In verse 23, in short, he says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go on your way. Be first be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Amen. We must understand that your gift is without repentance. Right. And the, even the gifts that you do have, whether they be monetary or material to the kingdom of God, they mean nothing if you have bitterness and hatred in your heart. We have gotten away from the rudimentary principle, the, 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 aside from the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. The foundation of the Christian's life should be forgiveness. Forgiveness. Should be forgiveness and love. Mm -hmm. 
But forgiveness is based out of one's love for God and his people. Right. Because you forgive. Some of us have to forgive God for, uh, we have to forgive God for choosing who our parents is. Mm -hmm. Instead of being mad at him, we simply say, Lord, I forgive you. You know, uh, and, and you say, what do you mean forgive God? Watch this. Some people don't believe they have a relationship with God. But do you know Moses even himself had at a point checked God about something that God had done mm -hmm. or something that he felt God was wrong about? Right. He said, Lord, how are you going to drag these people out into this wilderness and then kill them you know what, for Pastor, something they're doing? That's, he know, said, God, the Bible says God repented to himself. Right. You know, that's powerful because what people don't realize when you come to God, it's like talking to your father. Come on. If you upset with your father, you're going to tell him what's on your mind. We, we are children of God. Absolutely. And, and you know, people always say, well, I don't want to know. God wants you to bring your cares and concerns to him. Man. You know, because it, it reminds me of Job. Uh, when Job came and brought his concerns and, and God said, man up. Come on. Where was you at when I created the heavens and the earth? Absolutely. And, and that's what he wants us to do. And, and like you were saying, is, therefore, if you have... A, a, if, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reckoned. See, that's what people don't realize. You know, when you look at the, the gift, how can you say you can come to God and in prayer, but you you still have a problem with somebody that you never forgive? Absolutely. Even though that, even if you didn't do nothing wrong, that's going to uh, cause your relationship with God bad because you not reconciled. Come on. We, we pray. A lot of people prayer isn't getting answered because they don't believe God knows their heart. Right. God knows your heart. He knows you upset with him. Right, right. So if you ain't getting in line with God and reconciling with your creator, right. your master, your, your teacher, right. your, the person who loved you when you didn't love yourself, right, right. if you cannot reconcile and forgive him, Mm. How are you going to reconcile and forgive your brother? Right. You say, well, why? Well, and I, listen, people of God, we don't want you to believe in any way that we can be, we have to forgive God or that God needs our forgiveness. Right. The Bible says, let not a man think that he should receive anything from God. What I mean by forgiving God means accepting his will. Mm. Accepting his will. God's will sometimes is that people shun us, mistreat us, and hurt us. Why? Philippians chapter 3 says... That I may know him right. and the power of his resurrection right. and the fellowship of his suffering. How can you really say you know God if you ain't never been betrayed? Right. Right. How can you say you really know God if you ain't never been mistreated by folk that you done took care of? Right. How can you say you really know God if you ain't never been mistreated, slapped down, lied to, stepped on, name thrown under a bus? Right. You can't really understand the sacrifices of God till you done been through what he been through. You know what? I'm glad you Come said on. that. Uh, when you said, how can you love God? And it says in 1 John 4, 20, it said, If anyone say I love God yet hate his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he, he has, has not, not seen. seen. Come on so now. So that's, you know, and that's what is so true because I'm going to be honest with you. You know, sometimes you be like, man, I just don't want to forgive these people. I ain't done nothing wrong, but God don't see it. But, so when I reflect back on his life and what they did to him, how they treated him, and he did not humble, he didn't say a word, but he just continued to endure. But we got to remember uh, one word that I love what Jesus always said, Father. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I truly believe a lot of people, even in the in the in the body of Christ, don't know what they do sometimes. Oh no, no. no. And, and, but we, as mature Christians, we gotta sometimes overlook that. And, and you know, I just thank God for allowing me to be around brothers that I can come to and encourage. Because you can't do this by ourselves. That's no. the biggest struggle, Pastor Dale, is that we always think we can go in this by ourselves. And then when you get when, when when the devil come against you and you ain't got nobody to lean on and, 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 and you're going to get ate alive. You're going to get ate alive because I'm telling you, I thank God for the man that God brought in my life. Chris, this uh, this That's why he called it the church. The church is a body of believers. Absolutely. Ecclesiastes, it's a called out people. It's not never said an individual saying. Absolutely. It's a called out people that we got to defend. 
depend on one another. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I totally agree. As a matter of fact, in this other part of the text, mm -hmm. it said this is where it gets tricky for a lot of people. Right. The first part is the word reconcile. Right. To be reconciled is to be restored, restored, to be a part of, to make a, 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 a wholeness out of something that was divided. Watch this. To your brother. Now, he said it to your brother. That means I see you just as equal as I see the other person. Mm -hmm. Y'all connected. Y'all both come from me. I'm the father. Right. You are the children. So he called him our brother, not our friend, our homeboy, somebody we done met, our brother. Watch this. This is not just people we meet. These are our brothers. Right. And then come and offer your gift. Yeah. Then come. People, we coming in, or we're not coming in order. God is a God of order. When we come to God, we have to come in order. You come and bring your gift after you reconcile. Too many people are coming to church offering worship to God, but they have bitterness, bitterness in their heart. heart. You you already out of order. That's why your work. That's why when you leave your worship experience, it's not really a real experience. You just sang some songs. How do you feel about this, Dale? Mm -hmm. You know, I. Uh, it bothers me sometimes is how a person that comes to church mm -hmm. and always come to the offer altar. But what I don't get is this is that we as pastors we preach submission, mm -hmm. but people don't submit. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why you go through because you out there, you don't come to Bible study, you don't you come to church half. Half uh, sometimes you don't, and then you expect to survive out in a world that's so corrupt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't. It's just like with us as pastors. If we ain't in the word, if we ain't preaching, if we ain't teaching, and we just oh every well, I'm not gonna do no studying this week, so I'm gonna just put my sermon together. How you think that gonna last? Take this from a preacher who have been attacked, like you have, and many other preachers. Uh, we we send our definitely our prayers to Bishop Eddie Long yes. and his family and the people of God and uh, New Birth. I think right. that's the name Love of his church. And uh, we we definitely want to be praying for Reverend James Stanberry and Stanberry, his, family. his family. And we want to keep reaching out. All the pastors and leaders all over the world is under attack right Amen. now. And it's not because we special. It's because there's a change going on and God is about to do something great. Mm -hmm. And before we could do a work, the enemy has to uh, do his part. Right. You know, but coming. some He's of coming. it is not the devil. It's our inability to believe right. that God is going to take care of us in spite of the things around us. And when uh, what we lose sight of, uh, preacher, is that we are, are getting into a place where we are not fully trusting God yeah. with our lives and coming to him in a divine order. If you are a preacher of the gospel and you are preaching with hatred in your heart, right. you're not preaching, you're running your mouth. You're running your mouth. If you are a <laughs> worshiper and you have malice in your heart, you're not worshiping, you're singing a song. If you are a, a, a psalmist, whatever, if you are a prophet and you have bitterness in your heart, you are not a prophet, you are a soothsayer or a divinationist, mm. a root worker. See, if you don't, if you have bitterness in your heart, the Bible says, how can bitter water and fresh water come from the same spring? And you know, that's, they that's, cannot. They can't. And that's that, so we got to get this stuff out of us so we can reconcile because the power of forgiveness lies into one area, grace and mercy right. and love. If you have more bitterness and hatred exercised in your life, then you have grace, love, and mercy, then you will operate in that. Yeah. And you can put on the best show you want. People are not going to buy into it. Matter of fact, the other text that we want to get into before we leave is in 2 Corinthians 5.17. And we want you to know that we are fully aware that you might already know this text. It says, uh, uh, if any man. <laughs> you know what, first, stop right there. <laughs> now, when he said any man, now he, he's talking about who? Christian. Man, any man. Any That's man right. is who we're in Christ Believers. Jesus. Believers. Now, we, we want y'all to understand he's not talking about non-believers. He's talking about Christ, people who say they are of God. Mm. Are Christians? Let's 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 clear that right now. So if you are in Christ Jesus, come on, Pastor, preach. All right. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, be in who Christ? In, in not Christ. In your mama, not in your dad, not in your pastor, not in your cousin or your friends. Let me help you, people, with all these titles. Mm -hmm. Your title means absolutely nothing to God. 
Mm -hmm. When God picked you, he didn't pick you apostle. He didn't pick you pastor. He didn't pick you teacher. He didn't pick you prophet. He picked you as he is. And he is alone. Now, if you hold an office or an anointed mm. office or an appointed office, it is through the ordainment of God himself by him allowing you to be in that place that you must first be in him for the right. fullness of that office to take place. This. Watch this. He is a new what? Creation. A new one. Cre so uh, when you a new, a new creation, he didn't say just change. Come on. He said born again. That's right. See, people just change, but everybody's not born again, and that's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Let's <laughs> Boy, help, help, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. He is a new creature. The old All things are passed <laughs> away. <laughs> that passed away meaning dead. It's dead. Buried. Buried. And gone, not a part of this And new never life. be seen again. Come on. Never <laughs> again. Behold, all things are become new. Well, now we see that word new Come mm -hmm. on now New is twice You done seen it yeah. again Then it says in verse 18 And all, all things, things are of who? God. God All things are of God Who hath reconciled There's that word again Us to himself mm -hmm. By Jesus Christ. Christ Again if you don't know Jesus I don't know how you can be reconciled to God The Bible says any man mm -hmm. Who enter any other way mm -hmm. Is the same as a thief, thief and a robber Come on now It says and hath given us To the ministry of what Reconciliation Can I, can I bother no, you, you for you that know, I one want for you, a I second want you to, cause see, that's Is that alright He gave us the ministry Of, of what reconciliation. Listen, Come on I, break it down a little bit I want to bless you all today And I want you to share this With as many ministry people as you can share and this is not I, but the Bible. It says it right here. I'm going to read verse 18 to you again. Because this is not me. I know too many people get offended when you say something against the ministry God gave them. But listen to this. There's only one ministry he gave us. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us to the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this. God himself gave his own son mm -hmm. to reconcile us back to him. Mm -hmm. He could have kept his son yeah. Yeah. for how we've been behaving. Right. And then he said he has given us to the ministry of reconciliation. That means you don't have any other ministry. In other words, I love what God has given me. God has given me an um, a, 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 a opportunity mm -hmm. by his uh, uh, by, because everything belongs to him right. To start a church called Cornerstone Deliverance right. And while it's a nice opportunity And I thank God for it The gift should never be bigger Than the person who gifted it to me right. God himself right. The blessing should never be bigger Than the blesser right. And as much as I love this church And the people in it as much as I love the release ministries whom I work for at the Douglas County Youth Center with the young people mm -hmm. and the people in it, I, I must be aware of the fact that the only ministry, even if I birthed one in my own heart, right. the only ministry he really gave me right. was reconciliation. Right. I, in other words, watch this. We could just close all the names of our churches down and just call it one thing, the reconciliation of Jesus the Christ. Because that's the only ministry he really gave us. Now, I'm not insulting the mind of man or how God had placed certain ministries and different mantles on different people. Some people are called to the mantle uh, of Catholics, and some people are called to the mantle of Protestants, and some people are called to the various different denominations within the Protestant faith. Or you could be Baptist, you could be Pentecostal, you could be Apostolic, you could be any other version you want to be, and wherever God puts you, he puts you there. But if your ministry... For core value is not reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who you really living for. I like what this said. It said that. It goes on to say, all this from God who reconciled us to himself to right, mm -hmm. and gave up. And it goes on to say, God bring us back to himself, reconciling us to blotting out our sin. Uh-huh. And making us righteous. We are no longer God's enemy or stranger or foreigners to him. Mm -hmm. When we trust in Christ, because we have been reconciled to God, mm -hmm. God gave us the gift of reconciliation. God, God, we have the privilege of encouraging others to do the same. Wow. To Go do ahead. the same. To do the so same. So, like you said, we have to learn to reconcile people to Christ. Our job is to show love towards one another. And, you know, like I always uh, say, uh, Pastor Dale, is that 
if the world see the church do if the world see the church acting like them that's why the church is so in danger because they're coming to get hope they're coming to get peace they come to get joy but if we're acting the same way as the world you know they ain't gonna get that no you know uh no. i just want to say this uh no i am no, a no. pastor of the international church christ bill we have sunday school at 9 45 we have a church service at 11 o'clock at 2537 north 62nd street and I'm telling you, if you ever want to come, uh, our, our vision is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And our mission is just simple, love like Christ first loved us. And I want uh, uh, Pastor Dell to introduce his church, his address. You know, uh, we're not out here to, we are just one person. We consider ourselves servants. We're not on no pedestal about, uh, you know, I love what he always say. We got to get away from this building ministry and start building people. People. Right? And that's the bigger. Pastor Dill, uh, give them information about your church. Uh, my church, the church that uh, the Lord has allowed me to shepherd. Yeah. Even under when, what it is under shepherd. Man. Well, under, a great shepherd. Come on, God. <laughs> and I thank him for the opportunity. Yes. And the church has taught me so much. And I thank God for everything that has continued to teach me. Uh, Cornerstone Deliverance is a church that God placed in my heart when I was incarcerated in the Federal Bureau mm -hmm. of Prison in Leavenworth, Kansas, and I want to share with you that at our church, we are here for one thing, to see people set free, living for Christ every day, all day, and we do our best to show that we don't want to be so spiritually deep, we know right. earthly good, but we don't want to give you a sandwich and don't love you. Right. We want to keep a balance and to be and teach one thing in our church, this ministry of reconciliation, and it says in verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God God did beseech you by us. Mm -hmm. We pray you in Christ's deed, be ye reconciled to God. And I wanted to share the ambassador part. Um, I want you to know that the biggest prayer of, of, of my current existence in this earth as a man of God, I didn't say a man who works for mm -hmm. God, but a man of God. There is a difference, people of God, that watch this, that there is a difference between an ambassador of Jesus Christ and a tourist. Right. The reason why so many people go from church to church is because they're tourists the reason why so many people fail at ministry is because they're tourists for Jesus instead of ambassadors tourists can come they can put money on it they can stay at your at your church like you stay at an extended stay <laughs> hotel they can rent up the phone bill they can uh, uh, they can uh, order different amenities they can do all this stuff just like we do in the church we can come fast pray fellowship but most people are tourists mm -hmm. and they're not ambassadors I'm going to show you an ambassador is a person who pitch a tent mm -hmm. plant themselves in a place trust God not man mm -hmm. and not be moved because if you hear for God your idealism does not matter you know what pastor I'm glad you used that word ambassador because uh, an ambassador is one that represents God Ooh. so when he send out the ambassador he's going on what the king is saying yes not what he is saying that's so right. that's how we are as as christian that we represent jesus christ so when people see you they got to see jesus in you if they're not seeing jesus in you and, and you mentioned that earlier we got to get off that wide road because <laughs> he <laughs> the, the, the lead to the struggle because he said narrow is the path and only few and only people few gonna find this but you know i just want to uh share with you we don't we got uh probably made about three or four minutes left and uh, uh, do you think we should pick up next week? You want to pick up next week to finish this out? Absolutely. Or, okay. I want to uh, dig a little deeper okay. to the well, ambassador. Yeah, next portion. week, uh, I'm going to be absent. But my, my brother gonna be on the show for next week. Uh, he's gonna pick up. We're gonna pick up and finish off uh, the power of forgiveness. But you know, this is just not for y'all. This is for all of us because I was struggling with this. Even though you know, sometimes even when people feel that they ain't never done nothing wrong, and but if you at easy, God is trying to show you that you need to reconcile with something that's not right. Absolutely. And that's the whole key word is that we got to learn to reconcile with one another because if the people see us not uh, getting along in the body of Christ, why would they come to Jesus? Ooh. 
Uh, I, I work with a lot of young people, and a lot of them don't come to church because the same division that they see in the mm. streets with the young gang members and the young men who are divided and the young people fighting on social media, mm. on Facebook and whatnot, and recording it, the different domestics. We often in the church pray that these people get it together. Right. But we are the reason why a lot of our prayers are not reaching heaven mm -hmm. is because we won't get it together in the church with each other. Mm -hmm. See, we cannot ask God, you know, we can, but I don't know how far to go where we'll ask God for reconciliation for the people when we have no reconciliation among well, hold, the saints. Hold that. I get, to get that out because that, that you get started to get a little deep. We only got a few minutes. I need you to finish that up, brother. So uh, we only got a couple of minutes, and I want to uh, uh, let you know again, I am the under-shepherd of the International Church Christ Bill. We are located at 2537 North 62nd Street, one block one block south of 62nd in Maple. Come out and worship with us. Our, our service starts, Sunday schools is at 945. Uh, we have a, a worship service at 11. And then we just started Wednesday night Bible study at 6 o'clock. So come out and worship with us at the International of Christ Be where everybody is, uh, uh, everybody or somebody in Jesus' name. So Brother Dale, close us out. Say what you have to say. You got a couple of minutes. Go on and uh, introduce your church again and then close us out in Prayer. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Cornerstone Deliverance, 3223 North 45th Street on the Better Together campus. We want you to come out and be blessed to see you set free, living for Christ every day, all day. And we also run Bible study on Wednesdays at 630. Worship Sundays is Sunday. Worship services Sunday at 11. Amen. And we want you to be blessed, be encouraged. And we are, both of our ministries have one thing in common. Yes. We want to build you yep. so you can build the kingdom. Amen. Man. Because as long as you love God, then we know that you will do everything that your God has called you here to do. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. Lord, we are doing our best. Yes. Lord, we are doing our best to, do, to be pleasing in your sight. Lord, we pray right now that if we died on this day. That if somebody didn't look at all our accolades and all the things we accomplished, but if somebody just said he tried to feed somebody, he tried to close somebody, he tried to visit somebody, yes. because that's what we are here to do. Yes. I thank God right now himself for all that he has done in my life and my brother. Yes. We pray for your church home and we also pray for the ones here in our own city. We lift up our president of this United yes. States and we pray that God guides his heart and his mind. In the name of Jesus, we look forward to seeing you again. Bless you. We thank you for tuning in to Defender of the Faith. For my for Pastor Vernon, I'm Dale Carter. Y'all have a blessed week in the name of Jesus. Amen.